Hi, I'm Jilly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you something that I've never made before. And it's going to be pickled eggs. Gluten free, of course. If you ever find yourself with a whole bunch of eggs and you've made everything you know or want with eggs and you're getting a little tired of them, which I don't, I love eggs, but if you ever find yourself with a lot of eggs, this hopefully will be a really good recipe. And this is a really big batch. I've got five dozen eggs. And in my big pot right here, I have five dozen eggs. And they're almost up to a boil. Once they come up to a boil, I'm going to put the lid on and let them go for probably about 17 minutes or so. There's so many different ways that people, well, I shouldn't say so many. There's probably like maybe three. But the way that I usually do hard boiled eggs, if I'm doing, oh, maybe 10, you know, for egg salad or deviled eggs or something like that, I'll put them in a pot, cover them with water, bring them up to a boil, put the lid on and turn it, turn the heat off and then let them just steam in there for about, about 15 minutes or so. But because I have so many, I think I'm going to leave them boil for a few minutes and then put the lid on and then let them sit in the hot water for a while with the lid on. Maybe about 20 minutes. And then once they're finished, normally you could dump them into a strainer or you know water bath with some ice in it. I don't have any ice and I don't have a strainer big enough to hold them all. So my plan is to just dump out the hot water in the sink and then just fill up the sink with cold water and then probably repeat that process until they're cool enough to peel. I've got four quart jars and three pints. I think I should be able to get 10 to 12 eggs per quart, but I wanted to do some pint jars to maybe give away as a gift. And I've washed my jars and my lids and my rings. And they're not new lids, They've, they're being reused because I'm not sealing the jars. When I first decided that I wanted to do pickled eggs, there are so many recipes. And a lot of it is kind of a personal taste. But the recipe that I found that looks the most appealing to me, at least for a beginner, and I think, I think they're called mustard eggs, something like that. And again, different variations for that recipe. And of course, no sugar. I'm going to use honey. And I'll probably, these are kind of biggish cloves, but I'll probably do one clove per jar. And these are sweet onions. You could probably do, I've seen it done with red onions, yellow onions, whatever kind of onions. And I'm using all apple cider vinegar. And I've seen this done with a combination of apple cider or white vinegar. Kind of a use what you have. A lot of these things I already have because when I make my chili sauce, some of these are the ingredients that go in my chili sauce. And so I always have them on hand. I always look for them when they're on sale. Water. I've got two thirds of a cup of mustard. And this is horseradish mustard. I have no idea if it will be good in this but I really like this mustard, so I don't see why it wouldn't. Salt, celery seed, mustard seed, some whole cloves, and then I've got some turmeric here. And from what I can tell, that makes the eggs a pretty color as well. If you're using regular yellow mustard, it would be more yellow. My horseradish mustard is not very yellow, but we'll see. And I'm sure the apple cider vinegar will add color to it as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut up my onions, get my garlic ready, and then I'll put a layer in the jars, and then when the eggs are ready, we'll go from there. And for my onions, I'm just going to go just in slices. I don't know if you can hear my eggs. They're just about up to a boil. If you have a favorite pickled egg recipe, let me know. There's a lot of information out there on canning websites and whatnot that you can't guarantee the safety of canned eggs. That's why they need to be stored in the fridge. Although I'm sure if you have a root cellar or somewhere that stays cold, that would be an ideal spot too. But mine will just go in the fridge. And then of course we have to wait two weeks. For some reason, two weeks is the determined time before you can taste them. And I get it. You want the, you want the flavors to get into the eggs. And also I've heard that the longer they sit, the more flavorful they get. And I don't know yet how long they last. 
So I don't really have a definite answer for you there. A lot of people that, you know, videos that I watched or recipes that I've, I've looked at, they don't last very long. You eat them. People love them so much that they eat them before they can determine how long they might stay good for in the fridge. So there's all of my onions, kind of thinnish sliced. Jeez, I said I washed my jar, but not that one, I guess. I've chosen wide mouth jars just because I feel like it's easier to drop the eggs in and when they're ready to eat. I feel like a wide mouth jar is easier to get the eggs out of. And this is a pint. It's a little short squatty pint. But I think I could get five eggs in each of these pints, maybe four, maybe five in this one. And I, I don't know, I'm not going to prepare them all. I want to make sure some of my eggs, if they don't survive the boiling process, I might not be able to use them or if they don't peel very easily. Oh, and I should mention, I put some vinegar in my water. I've also heard so many people complaining about peeling eggs. And I do know that the older your eggs are, the easier they are to peel. But I've never used vinegar in my boiling water for hard boiled eggs before, but I'm using it today. I figured with five dozen eggs to peel, I'll take all the help I can get. My water is finally up to a boil. I boiled it for 10 minutes turned it off with the lid on and let it steam for about 15 minutes. I wanted to make sure my eggs are hard boiled. It's not like this is gonna be a salad if my yolks are overcooked. So I'd rather go on the safe side than have a runny yolk. And I'm not worried about being gentle, just dumping these in the sink, I'm gonna crack them anyways. And I'll be a little careful, but it's not too important to be gentle. And you know, the funny thing is, every time I boil, I, every time I hard boil eggs, whether it's six or 12 for egg salad or something, one always breaks open and becomes a mess inside the pot. Not one single one broke open. That's pretty good. In the same pot that my, my eggs were cooked in, I'm gonna add in all of my brine ingredients. You could use a separate pan if you want to, but why not? This one's already dirty. So I have 10 cups of apple cider vinegar. Very carefully pour this in. And I have two and a half cups of honey. I'll give you the recipe for a single batch, which is 12 eggs. And I know it looks like a lot of honey, two and a half cups, but if you are using sugar, it would be five cups. Two and a half cups of water. Two thirds of a cup of mustard. Again, this is the horseradish mustard that I really like. I have a third cup of mustard seeds, a third cup of celery seeds, third cup of salt, a half a teaspoon of turmeric. It's a heaping half teaspoon. and just mix this all together. We're gonna to bring it up to a boil. So I'm just gonna put it on my burner. <laughs> I made a mess. Clean everything up a little bit and start peeling my eggs. So I've got all my eggs peeled. One didn't make it. The shell kind of stuck and I ate that one. But it let me see what my yolk looks like. And I'm pretty sure I overcooked my hard boiled eggs. I usually don't cook them this hard, but for this particular recipe, it's okay. I don't mind if they're a little bit overcooked. So I'm gonna turn on my brine to about medium high, just to get it boiling. It doesn't need to be boiling specifically, but I wanna get that honey dissolved and the salt. While that's coming up to a boil, I can get my jars ready. I'm gonna leave one pint jar out, just in case I don't need it, then it's not dirty. I'm just gonna go a little bit of onions in each one. It's really up to you, whatever, whatever your flavor preferences are. I'm really excited, I really like sweet onions. 
And I think I might have gotten a little overexcited on my onions and my garlic. And I'm gonna be layering these, so it doesn't really matter. I think this one needs some more onion. I think that one does too. Maybe they all do. <laughs> Maybe I didn't overshoot my onions. I'm gonna go about three cloves in each one to begin with. It's all in the same jar. So I don't know that it even matters that you layer it. Now I'm gonna do a layer of eggs. And then just repeat with your layers. Some of my garlic cloves are actually kind of small. So I put a couple in. And I'm gonna go another layer of eggs and I think I actually might need more jars than what I have. We'll see. And this jar, I really wasn't sure how many eggs I'd be able to get in there. I think I can get two more, just squish those in. And I actually think I am gonna use this other jar too. And maybe if I wasn't using so many onions, I could get more of my eggs in the jars, but we'll see. I've never complained about having extra hard boiled eggs. And I think I'm gonna do one more egg each jar there put some of these onions in here like this. So far, what a really fun way to use up eggs. And onions and garlic. Maybe I won't do those. I think you wanna make sure the eggs are submerged. So I think those two are done. So those three are done. And now I'm just gonna continue on with my big ones. I think maybe one more for each of these. Well, maybe not. Oh, maybe. I don't want to push too hard and squish and squish my eggs too much, but I'd really like to get more eggs in these. So I've got five eggs left. Even though I could do one more jar, I don't think I'm going to. I've used all of my cloves and my garlic, and I don't think I can fit any more in these jars. But I think I might just put these in a jar anyways, just with some onions and see what happens with those. I got a few more cloves for this jar, but I want to stir my brine. And this is not a wide mouth jar, so I think it's going to be a little challenging when it comes time to get the eggs out of this one. But I think I can fit these five eggs in here. There we go. Put some little onions on the top. Last couple of cloves. There we go. I'm gonna put a few more onions on the tops of these ones too. Might as well. Got the onions. Maybe these will be the most oniony pickled eggs you've ever had, or I've ever had. I've never had pickled eggs. So this will be make it or break it, I think. Okay. And I've got my, my lids and my rings. And even though my funnel doesn't exactly fit in there, it will still be helpful to pour in the brine. The brine will be hot and it will make a mess, probably sticky from the honey. Now that my brine is ready, I'm debating whether or not to use a spoon, but I think I'm just gonna pour it in. Kind of challenging with my funnel. It's very challenging with my funnel, making a mess everywhere. The vinegar gets your eyes a little bit. But I'm a little concerned, maybe I've got my jars a little bit too full, but we'll see. And even though I'm not canning my jars, it's always just a habit to wipe around the edges before I put the lids on. And that one right there might be too full. This one is a disaster. I don't think you were able to see, I don't know, maybe you were able to see 
But this jar, it all spilled out the side. <laughs> They sure look pretty though. It is such a mess. I'm just gonna clean off the rim, put the lid on, and then run the whole thing underwater. And I probably have enough brine, I could do at least two more pints, maybe three. Or you could pickle something else, or just make less. But I got quite a bit. And they really look pretty. I don't know if you're supposed to shake these periodically while they're in the fridge waiting for two weeks. Maybe. I don't really know. This one and this one seem to have more celery seeds than the other ones. So that's interesting. Hmm. Once these cool off, I'm gonna write the date on the lids and stick them in the fridge and in two weeks, we can taste them. So here we are, it's just over two weeks. Two weeks and a few days. And I've been eating these pickled eggs, I just haven't had a chance to film it yet, but they're really good. Periodically in the fridge, I'll shake them up a little bit. Because I had some leftover brine, I decided to make some pickled kind of vegetables. And so I had some carrots and some leftover onions and garlic. And then of course the brine, and this is just an old pickle jar. I don't know if you save your old jars like I do, but they sure come in handy for uses like this. And they have a lid. If you don't happen to have a lid or you don't wanna use one that might be used for something else. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have noticed I did use these when I made some coleslaw a, a while back. And what I did was, again, this is just onions and carrots and a little bit of garlic. But I got a, a green cabbage and a red cabbage and I cut them up like you would for coleslaw. And I cut up a couple of eggs and I cut up some of my onions and my carrots. And then I took some of the juice, which is the brine, and mixed it with a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of honey, some salt and pepper. Oh, and then I threw in some thawed frozen peas too. But it really, it makes a really good coleslaw, these pickled carrots and onions. And then this brine makes a really good dressing for coleslaw, so who knew? But I've been really happy with this recipe. And they are very, very strong smelling. But with all of the onions I had in here, I was expecting a stronger onion flavor. And even when I cut up some of the onions in my coleslaw, you almost couldn't tell they were in there. And I do know that vinegar will lessen the harshness of onions. And even just after two weeks, my carrots and my onions are still crisp. And if you're gonna make this recipe, this is the towel that I used when I was pouring my brine in and some of my brine spilled out of my jar. But I just wanted to show you, and that's been a couple of weeks, and I've probably washed this towel, oh, maybe three times, but it stained my towel. It's lighter yellow than it used to be. So just be mindful when you're making this recipe. Use a towel that Maybe you don't care about so much if it gets stained or a darker color towel, but it does stain. But just a little note of warning, and maybe you already knew, but I didn't know. <laughs> and then all I do is just fish around in here to get an egg. And then we'll just cut this down the center. And there was a couple of things I learned just besides that it will stain. But I overcooked my hard-boiled eggs. Usually when I hard-boiled eggs, I like the centers to be just done. So they stay bright yellow and they don't get the green ring around them. But they're still really good. And the other thing I noticed, and I guess it probably depends too on how, how long you cook your hard-boiled eggs. But after being in this brine for a couple of weeks, they're really firm. They're a lot firmer than just a regular hard boiled egg. And the other thing I would do next time is I would do different flavors. And I was researching, because I've seen some other recipes where you can water bath can these or pressure can these, but all of the information I could find on preserving like that is it's not recommended. And what I could find is the reason it's not recommended is because there's no way to guarantee that the heat source 
is heating all the way through to the middle of the egg. But there's a lot of people that can them and make them shelf stable. So my advice to you is it's your kitchen. You do what you want to do in your kitchen. I did find some information that pickled eggs will last in the fridge for about four months. I don't think mine will last that long. We've been eating them and I, I don't think they'll last four months, but up to four months is what I've heard. And maybe you have some information that might be a little bit different than that. Let me know. Let me know how long yours last or maybe you water bath can yours or let me know what flavors you use. I'm really excited to try some different flavors. I've seen a lot of recipes with beets and they turn the eggs kind of a purpley color. That would be a lot of fun. I'm going to experiment with some other recipes besides just egg salad and in a coleslaw. These might go really well in a potato salad or wherever else you would like to have a hard boiled egg, just a regular chopped salad. But let's give it a bite. It's hard to tell what flavors are coming through. I feel like the apple cider vinegar is a really strong flavor. So maybe if I had used a, just a white vinegar, it wouldn't be as tangy. And then the, the turmeric has a distinct flavor. Of course, the, the mustard that I put in here, the mustard has a really distinct flavor too, but really good. It's a, a nice little snack. If you take this snack to work with you, you might offend your coworkers because they, they smell really strong. I feel like for one basic recipe, you can utilize all of the parts and then there's no waste. What a perfect use for, for hard boiled eggs. And again, you wouldn't need to do 30 like I did, but I'll definitely be making this again and doing some different flavors for sure. But I will, I will keep this flavor in my rotation because it really is good and, and I sure love that this makes such a delicious coleslaw. If you have any questions or comments about this or if you're interested in seeing more recipes similar to this, maybe some pickles or I've mentioned before that I would like to do a little bit more canning videos and some of you have mentioned an interest in that but if there's something that you want to see, let me know. I'm planning my garden and we'll see what, what kind of a harvest I get this year. I might need a lot of different uses of doing things. So let me know what you think about that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.